Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss the example for data descriptive. So here we have the situation for group data. Kindly refers to the table, we are given an information. Refers to the left hand side where we have the age, which is a class interval. Why we say this is a class interval? Kindly refers to the interval where we have 1 to 5, 6 to 10. 11 to 15. And we notice that from 5 to 6, there is a gap. That's why we denoted it as a class interval. Next, focus on the F, where we have the frequency, followed by cumulative frequency. Next, we have the midpoint, which is denoted as X, followed by Fx. So meaning that the frequency multiplied with the midpoint. Next, we have the fx square, meaning that the x square or the midpoint squared multiplied with the frequency. Next, at the end of the table, we have the boundary, which is consists of lower boundary and upper boundary. So now we are going to focus on the table. We are going to fill up the table. Kindly refers to the situation where we have the cumulative frequency. So how to construct the cumulative frequency. Actually, we need to refer to the frequency. For example, if we have 35, next level, we have 95. So it means that we have to add on the 35 and the 60 in order to have the cumulative frequency. Next, followed by 95 plus with the 70, and we will have the cumulative frequency 165. Next, focus on this part. So we need to add on the 245 with the 48. So the total will be 293 for the cumulative frequency. So at the end, 332 plus with the 28 and we will have the total 360. So another way to check the cumulative frequency is to look at the frequency. If we add on the frequency and we will have the total 360 as well. Next, move on to the midpoint. So Kylie refers to the midpoint. So how to find the midpoint? So Kylie refers to the interval where we have the limit, lower limit. For the left hand side, Kylie refers to the interval where we have 1, 6, 11, 16, 21, 26 and 31, which is the lower limit. Next we have the upper limit which consists of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and lastly, 35, which is the limit. So in order to find the midpoint, or we denoted it as an x, the formula would be the lower limit plus with the upper limit divided by 2. So that would be the formula for midpoint. So, kindly refers to the interval 16 to 20. So, we have the limit 20 plus with the 16 and we will have 36 divided by 2. So, the midpoint will be 18. Next, kindly refers to the interval 26 to 30. Again, sum up the limit where we have 30 plus with the 26 where we will have 56 divided by 2 and we will have the midpoint 28. Next, kindly refers to the Fx. So in here, we have to use the midpoint, which is 3, multiply with the frequency, which is 35, and we will have 105. Next, refers to the interval 26 to 30. The midpoint, which is 28, multiply with the 39, and we will have 1092. Next, refers to the fx square. Again, I repeat, the x square multiply with the frequency. So in here, refers to the interval 16 to 20. The x square, which is 18 square, multiply with the 80 and we will have the value 25920. Next, refers to the class interval where we have 31 to 35. The midpoint is 33, so means that 33 square multiply with the 28 and we will have 30492. So again, if we sum up the fx square and we will have 12, 83, 65. 
For the fx, we will have 6, 0, double 5. Next, we are going to refer to the lower boundary and upper boundary. How to find the lower boundary? So kindly refers to the class interval where we have 11 until 15 and also the interval for 16 minus 20. So in order to find the upper boundary for the class interval 11 to 15, so what we have to do is to add on the upper limit for the class which is 11 until 15. The upper limit plus with the lower limit of the next class. So where we have 15 plus with the 16 divided by 2. So in here we have 15.5. Next, refers to the class interval 16 to 20. So in order to find the lower boundary for this class, what we have to do is to add on the upper limit for the previous class together with the current class, which is 16. So 15 plus with the 16 divided by 2. So again, we will have 15.5. Next, refers to the class interval with the value 21 to 25. In order to find the upper boundary for that class, what we have to do is to make use of the class with the upper limit plus with the lower limit of the next class, where we have 25 plus with 26, then divide by 2. So we will have 25.5. So repeat the procedure and we will have 25.5 for the class, which is 26 to 30. Next, for the second part, kindly refers to the question where we have find the mean followed by the mode median, Q1 represent as the first quartile, Q2 as the second quartile or we can say the median, Q3 is the third quartile followed by variance, standard deviation, 75 percentile or we can denote it as p sub 75 and the pearson coefficient then comment on your data so now next what we have to do is to find the mean so kindly state the formula for the mean so mean can be denoted as x bar equals to the summation for the fx over the summation for f so kindly make use of the table. So where we have 6055 divided by 360. So from here, the mean is equal to 16.8194. So the mean approximately 16.8. So we express the situation in three significant figure. Next, what we have to do is to find the mode. So given the formula, mode is equal to the lower boundary for the class plus where we have the bracket d1 over d1 plus d2 multiply with the class size so kindly go through the situation so how to find the mode number one identify the class mode by referring to the frequency so kindly observe the frequency the column for the frequency and we notice that we have the highest frequency which is 80. So meaning that 16 to 20 is the model class where we have 16 to 20. So from here, the lower boundary, which is the LK, is equal to 15.5. Next, what we have to do is to find the value for D1. So the D1 means that the difference, the difference for the previous class. So meaning that 80 is the model class minus with the previous class which is 70 so the value for d1 is equal to 10 next is to find the d2 so the d2 denoted as the difference for the next class so for the current class where we have 80 for the model class minus with the next class which is 48 so from here the value for d2 is equal to 32 Next, what we have to do is to find the C, where we have the class size. So how to find the class size? By referring to the boundary for that class, which is 20.5, minus with the lower boundary, which is 15.5. So the class size will be equal to 5. So now kindly substitute the value into the formula for the mode. So here we have the mode equals to 15.5, plus where we have d1 which is 10 over 
10 plus with the 32 multiply with the 5. So kindly refer to the calculator. So the mode will be 16.6905. So approximately, so the mode will be equal to 16.7. So kindly express the situation in three significant figure. Next, we are going to find the median. So kindly state the formula for median. So in here, the median actually is also can be denoted as Q2. So the formula would be LK plus with the bracket, we have the N over 2 minus with the cumulative for the previous class over where we have the frequency for the class multiplied with the class size. So first what we have to do is to find the median class. How to find the median class? We have the median class which is equal to 360 over 2. So the median will be located at the 180 terms. So kindly refers to the cumulative frequency. So where is the location for 180? So kindly refer to the situation. Here we have 165. So meaning that not yet reached the 180. So the 180 is located over here where we have the 16 to 20. So we can denote it as a median class. Sixteen to twenty. So from here, the lower boundary for that class will be fifteen point five. Next is to find the n over 2. So the n over 2 actually is equal to 180. So now what we have to do is to substitute the value. So where we have the q2 as a median, the lower boundary will be 15.5 plus with the situation n over 2 which is 180 minus with kindly refers to the formula where we have the capital F sub k minus 1 means that refers to the cumulative frequency where we have the median class, k minus 1 means that refers to the previous class, where we have 165 over, kindly refers to the formula where we have small letter f, sub k. So here we have the median class and refers to the frequency for that class, which is 80, multiply with the class interval, which is equal to 5. So from here, by referring to the calculator, where we have Q2 is equals to 16.4375. So from here, we can approximate the situation where we have 16.4 as the median for the situation. Next, what we have to do is to find the Q1, which is the first quartile. So the formula for the first quartile will be LK plus bracket N over 4 minus with F sub K minus 1 over small letter F K multiply with the C which is the class size. So what we have to do is to identify where is the first quartile class. So kindly refers to the situation where we have the Q1 is equal to 360 over 4. So the location for Q1 will be 90. So kindly refers to the cumulative frequency. So where is the location for 90? So kindly refers to the situation. So the location for 90 is located at the class interval 6 to 10. So in here we have the Q1 class, which is 6 to 10. So from here, the lower boundary for that class will be 5.5. So kindly substitute the situation. Q1 is equal to 5.5 plus where we have the situation N over 4, which is equal to 90. Minus refers to the formula where we have the capital F sub K minus 1, means that the previous class, where we have 35. Over the frequency for that class, where we have 60, Multiply with the class size, which is 5. So the Q1 or the first quartile will be 10.0833. Approximate the situation. So Q1 will be around 10.1. Next is to find the third 
quartile. Or we can denote it as Q3. So the formula for the third quartile will be LK plus bracket 3N over 4 minus the FK minus 1 over the FK multiplied with the class size. So next is to identify where is the location for Q3. So Q3 is equal to 360 multiplied with 3 over 4. So the location for Q3 will be 270. So kindly refers to the cumulative frequency. Where is the location for 270? So it is located over here, which is the class 21 to 25. So meaning that the lower boundary for that class will be 20.5 plus where we have the 3n over 4 which is 270 minus the previous class where we have 245 over the frequency of that class which is 48 multiply with the 5. So from here the Q3 is equal to 23.10416. Round up the situation. So Q3 will be equal to 23.1. So that will be the situation. Next, what we have to do is to determine the interquartile range. So what is the formula for interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1? So the interquartile range will be 23.1 minus 10.1. So the interquartile range will be 13. Next, what we have to do is to find the standard deviation and also the variance. So, kindly refers to the formula for the variance. So, here we have S square. So, S can be represented for the standard deviation for sample. So, S square is equal to the summation for Fx square minus with bracket where we have the summation for Fx bracket square over the summation for F over the summation for f minus 1. So here we have the formula. So kindly refers to the formula and substitute the value. So here we have the variance which is equal to summation for fx square where we have 12, 83, 65 minus with we have the summation for fx then bracket square where we have 6, 0, double 5 square over the summation for f which is 300 and 60 over where we have summation f minus with the 1 so where we have 359 so the value for the variance will be equals to 73.8089 so if we round up the situation we will have the variance 73.9 next if we wish to find the standard deviation, means that we have to square root both sides. So the standard deviation is equal to 8.59540301. If we round up the situation, so the standard deviation will be equal to 8.60. So that will be the situation for the variance and the standard deviation. Next is to find the situation for percenta. So given the formula where we have the formula for percenta, P sub K is equal to LK plus bracket where we have K over 100 multiplied with the N minus the FK minus 1 over FK multiplied with the class size. So referring to the situation where we have P 75. So meaning that we have to identify the location for P 75. So where we have 360 multiplied with 75 over 100. So the location for P75 will be equal to 270. So where is the location for 270? So the location will be around here. So meaning that here we have the class, which is 21 to 25. Kindly substitute the value. So P75 is equal to where we have the lower boundary 20.5. Plus the situation, 75 percenta. So the terms will be 270 minus with the previous class, which is 245 over 
The frequency for that class where we have 48 multiplied with the class size which is equal to 5. So the P75 is equal to 23.1041-6667. If you round up the situation, so the P75 is equal to 23.1. So that would be the situation for P75 or the 75 percent. Next, what we have to do is to find the Pearson coefficient of a skewness. So we denoted it as a SK equals to, we have the formula, 3 multiplied with the mean minus with the median over the standard deviation. So kindly substitute the value. So we will have SK equals to 3 multiplied with the mean, which is 16.8. Minus, with the median, 16.4 over the standard deviation, 8.6. So it refers to the calculator and we have the value 0 0.1395. So from here, we can interpret the situation. Skew to the right. Or we can say it positively skew. We have the second formula where we have the Pearson coefficient of the skewness with mean minus with the mode over the standard deviation. Kindly substitute the value. So we will have 16.8 minus 16.7 over 8.6. So the coefficient will be 0 0.0116. So kindly refers to the value and we can state that the situation is slightly skew to the right. So here we are and thanks for watching.